All right, we're going to talk about grouping multiple pieces of uh, content items into a folder so that it's easier to keep track of many files that relate to the same assignment or the same week or both. Now, before I do, here we have an example of an EMT course where they have this long list of, um, of items and it's actually not too bad because we're only utilizing one book and that book is organized into chapters. And so each of these chapters is a PowerPoint file. And so it actually isn't very difficult to scroll through this list and find, for example, chapter 16 PowerPoint versus chapter 4 PowerPoint because they're all uh, chronological. That being said, some of these chapters do have multiple items as part of that chapter. So this uh, chapter 10, for example, has three different pieces of content. And if we look at some of the other examples of chapters, so chapter 14 has three different pieces of content. But if we look at this uh, section for videos, there's actually um, five videos. So we actually have five plus two, seven pieces of content for this one chapter. And this would be uh, an example where they might have been better off organizing chapter 14 with a chapter 14 folder and then inside that folder we have all of these materials. So if you're going to have multiple items for an assignment, you should group it into a folder just so it's easier to keep track of everything all at once. And luckily making folders is very easy. Now back in this course, uh, typically you should have all of your course materials for the course should go into the materials content area. All of the assignments should go into the assignments content area and all of your tests should go into the test content area. And using tests as an example, I'm going to go over to this tab, build content, and because I'm going to create multiple tests or multiple quizzes, I'm going to group them into a folder. So under build content over on the right hand side, we have this content folder as a new page. So I'm going to go ahead and create a content folder. And we can do that because we're working with a content area. So any content area can create folders. And we'll give this a name test, whoops, test folder, and then multiple directions for that. Uh, permit users to view content, yes. Track number of views, why not? Restrict date, nah. Hit submit. And now we have our folder. Now if you ever see an icon like a folder or a test or anything else grayed out, that means it is not visible to students. So if we come over here uh, to our test folder and click on this little uh, circle and go to edit mode, if I come down here to section 3 and say permit users to view content and set it to no, and I hit submit, this icon is now grayed out. And it even tells you, hey, this is not visible, so be aware of that. And that's okay if you're going to schedule folders to unlock at a certain date. We will show you how to do that in a future video. Uh, until then, just know that if it's gray, it means it's not, or it's not visible. If it's not gray, it is visible. And you change that feature by going over to your folder or your item, go to the circle, left click, go to edit, scroll down to the section on visibility, which is under, in this particular area, three and make it visible to people. Hit submit, and there we go. Now you can make as many folders as you want, and you can even put folders inside folders inside folders. There's no actual limit. Just make sure that your organizational style is consistent and isn't too ridiculous. And then you can create any kind of content item within a folder, including another folder, as I just said. And then here is an example of a course where they rename materials to lab materials as the content area. And within this, all of the uh, materials for the labs were organized by week. And the instructor chose to have the weeks on lock on schedule. But then once visible, they stayed visible in case you had to go back at any time and re review content. But to prevent students from having to constantly scroll through the list to the bottom, the current week that the student is on was always moved to the top by just dragging the little bar on the, the left-hand edge here and moving it up. So this is how they chose to keep the current folder for that week on top so it was easily accessible. 
And if we go into this week 14 folder, we'll see that we do have multiple files associated with it. And so this made navigating the course materials and accessing everything much more logical than just having a long list of various types of content for various weeks for various labs.